And when you went to uh, pick up the truck, uh, did you get a tour of the fire station as well? We did, yeah. That was probably the most memorable part of that. Yeah, Um, that was my favorite part. Join us as we dive into the wild world of government auctions and take you behind the scenes to uncover the cool and unique ways bidders from across America are utilizing the items they've won on Municipid. Like an ambulance repurposed into a work truck, to a city bus converted into an RV, and so much more. Welcome to the Municipid Podcast. Hi, Ken and Tatiana. Thank you for coming on this call today. Can you start us off by introducing yourself, your names, where you're based, and you mentioned that uh, you were a bit of a car nut, so I'm curious about your first uh, project car. Okay. All right. You want to go first? Uh, okay. Hi, I'm Tatiana, and um, well, I'm 11 years old. What grade are you in? Sixth grade. <laughs> where, where do we live? In Conroe. Conroe. Texas. Yeah. I love dancing. I dance a lot. And I like road trips. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> Very cool. I think we'll get to the road trips pretty soon. <laughs> uh, I'm Ken Johnson. Obviously, I, we, you know, we both live in uh, Conroe, Texas, which is just north of Houston. We're kind of a suburb of Houston. Yes, I am a car nut. Um, I have a lot of cars. I... Uh, as Tati said, that's probably one of my favorite things to do is buy a random car and mm-hmm. drive it home, um, and take the kids. So, so yeah, uh, my first project car, uh, the first vehicle that I owned was a 70, 1975 Ford F100, which was my dad's. And, uh, yeah, he and I actually did some work on it together and, um, so yeah, anyway, that was, that was my first, yeah, first project vehicle. That was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Um, and do you regularly go to government auctions or car auctions looking for vehicles to play with? So I don't physically go to them, but yes, um, I have, I'm, I'm a member of just about every like car auction site that I can find. Um, and Municipid was probably one of the more obscure ones, um, that I had found. And I, you know, was regularly seeing some pretty good deals going across, um, but they were a long ways away. So, you know, I was kind of, I guess, kind of waiting for a a special one to pop up on there, um, which ended up being, being this one in particular that, that we purchased. Yeah. So tell us about your favorite auction win from Municipid. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we had, uh, during COVID we had, we had bought, um, uh, a larger boat, uh, for us to, I guess to get away, you know, and, and to be outside, you know, a lot of people were buying RVs. We, we bought a, we bought a bigger boat. Um, and so part of that was I, I needed a, a, a larger truck to, to comfortably pull that. Um, we, we had one, but, um, I had some issues with that, um, with pulling that. So I wanted, wanted to find a, a, a diesel truck and, of course, it was the middle of COVID, so diesel trucks were like through the roof uh, price-wise. So it's kind of trying to find a creative way of finding an inexpensive um, diesel truck that you know was was hopefully going to be dependable. So I I noticed this come across the the 2001 uh, Chevy 3500 uh, come across like right right when it started, and I was like. I'm, I'm going to bid on this. Like it was, it was everything that I was looking for. It was crew cab. Uh, it was a diesel, it was super low miles. And, um, it was through a fire department, which I kind of had a theory that a a fire department would probably take better, a little bit better care of their vehicles, you know, compared to some other government auctions, you know, that kind of feel like the firefighters have, have a little bit more pride in, 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 um, uh, their Price. equipment. Yeah. So yeah, I, I asked several questions, um, which, uh, was a really good sign that I was getting responses. You know, that was one thing that I 
that made me feel good about this purchase ahead of time was uh, the responses were, were quick. And um, I actually, um, I had actually talked to somebody on the phone there, uh, the contact on the phone that was listed on Municipid and, you know, answered right away, answered all my questions. So, you know, that's, that's kind of rare uh, for these online auction sites for people to be responsive. Uh, I kind of feel like people just kind of throw stuff up there and, and expect it to sell. So, so I was, you know, all, all of that made me very comfortable when, when it was go time to, to bid on, on the last day. Um, and so, yeah, I, uh, like I said, comfortably bid on the last day. I think there was only one or two other bidders that I was kind of fighting with at, at the end. And, and, uh, and yeah, we, we ended up winning it and uh, picked it up two, two weeks later. Not often that you hear about using a fire truck to pull a boat, right? Did you have any concern about converting it into, you know, more a common truck usage? So we, we call it the fire truck and it, and it was a fire truck used by, by a fire department. But, you know, it was, a, it was a regular like one ton truck that had a utility body on the back. So, yeah, when, when I got it home, I, I took off you know, all the vinyl, you know, stuff that was all over at the stripes and the, uh, the advertisements or the markings for the fire department. I took all that off and, um, I took all the sirens and equipment and the lights off of it. Um, so yeah, it looks, looks like a regular, like utility bodied truck, um, that was taken really good care of. <laughs> Like the paint's paint's super shiny for that being uh, twenty twenty two years old. It's, I mean, it's been yeah, it's been stored indoors its whole life, and so yeah, it's uh, um, so yeah, it was was really easy converting it. You know, just kind of took a little uh, elbow grease and and a little time on our end to kind of get it ready. So yeah, it wasn't that only like two to three days that you had to like yeah, up we were messing with it for a little while, and yeah, yeah, didn't take long. And when you went to uh, pick up the truck, uh, did you get a tour of the fire station as well? We yeah. did. Yeah, that was probably the most memorable part of that. Yeah, um, that was my favorite part. You want to you wanna tell her about that? Sure. Okay, so um, we met this really nice older guy there. And he like said that he would show us a tour around. So we met a lot of the people. And that day they were like, having little kids go there to like t check out the um, place so they had like fun little things up and we also got t-shirts which we're wearing <laughs> and very nice <laughs> and uh they had a piece of the twin towers yeah. um because you know a lot of fire people were there and it was out in the front and they had like this one big stone brick of like what is what was on it? Like pictures and stuff. Oh yeah, it was uh, it was part of the memorial for like their nine eleven um, mm -hmm. piece of the tower. They had um, oh, they had I forget about, yeah I forget what was on there, but yeah, it was a memorial for the for nine eleven. Um, and then you you also got to sit in a fire truck that was oh, like a yeah. hundred years old. That was pretty cool. That yeah. was on display in the front and. Uh, Mr. David, let you crawl up in the in the driver's seat on that. Yeah, that it looked cool. really old. But yeah, super accommodating. You know, we we had to return our rental car um, that we took from the airport, and I had talked with Dave David ahead of time, and he had agreed to you know help us return that. So um, yeah, I don't know. Just just everything about that was was very you know, generous and very accommodating and like the t-shirts and, you know, Tati got to sit in like every, uh, fire, <laughs> every truck. fire truck that was in there, which I was jealous <laughs> about. Um, so yeah, that was, it was really cool. That was like a super special and probably the most memorable part, part of the entire trip was, was our tour around the, the firehouse. So yeah, yeah, that was neat. That's fantastic. That sounds like a lot of fun. So no adults were allowed to sit in the fire trucks. Unfortunately not. I mean, he didn't offer. I, I probably should have asked. Yeah, I know. I, know. I regret it. <laughs> what was the uh, fire station that you picked up the truck from and purchased the truck from? It was 
Cranberry Township Volunteer Fire Department. What was your road trip like back from there to bring the fire truck home? It was um, fun. There's like a lot of sights to see. And my favorite time whenever uh, we were driving was whenever the sun was setting because it was really beautiful because there were a lot of trees and stuff. So that was my favorite part whenever we were coming back. Yeah, we, we took off from uh, Cranberry Township, which was like north. That was north of uh, Pittsburgh. And we Isn't made it. Lived yeah, Pennsylvania? I used to live in, well, I used to live in northeast Pennsylvania. Huh? But yeah, we we made it to just north of Nashville um, that evening, and we stayed the night there. And then um, we got up early, and we went to the uh, Country Music Hall of Fame there in Nashville, and we kind of <gasps> poked around there for a while. That. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. That was so much fun. We got to see lots of sights and all the records. You mentioned that, like, big wall yeah, records. Yeah, wall records, and we got to... And record Elvis, our own. Yeah, and Elvis Presley's uh, yeah. car with like diamonds in yep. the paint. Yep. Wow, that's a pretty yeah, cool yeah. history yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so we we yeah we took off. We we were there for several hours, and then we we took off. Um, and yeah, we we made it into Texas, uh, where um we celebrated being back in texas with uh with whataburger which is <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 a I chain restaurant it. down here and uh i think it was over a hamburger that we decided that we were we were going to try to make it home that night you know we were gonna we we're gonna drive through most of the night to make it home so yeah. and what did we do what did we do every time we we went through a, a new state oh we turned on the sirens yeah, the, the <laughs> sirens and the lights still worked, so we celebrated every state by hitting the sirens and the lights. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of freaked the people out on the way home, but that was all right. Yeah, it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> and how yeah, long probably. was the drive? Um, I think altogether, I think it was a total of. I think it was like 22 hours of, of actual driving, something, something like that, you know, 20, 22 or 23 hours. So, so yeah, we knocked out a good chunk that first, first day. And then, yeah, we just decided to, to try to make it all the way home uh, the next it's day. So we got day. home super early, the early morning, the next day. So Yeah. Then we got home at like 2 a.m. or something. Yeah. Something like that. That's a long drive. So you've had the fire truck now for about six months, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and would you say um, all the travel and uh, driving back, all of that was worth it? Yes, I would say that. I mean, yeah. It's like really good. Yeah, we took took the boat out. I mean, we, we towed, towed the boat with it in the summer and... Um, yeah, we're about to go up. That's that's a project of mine over Christmas vacation is to uh, work on that a little bit. Um, so yeah, no, hundred percent worth it. We very satisfied with uh, with the condition. I think it was exactly. I think it was actually better um, than described. I think that they, I think they they kind of described it a little bit uh, more critically than what we actually found. So, and I'll, you know, we didn't have one problem on the way home, like not, not any issue. We, I usually buy, <laughs> I stop and buy a bunch of tools that I can't, can't, uh, or they won't allow on the airplane when I go on these road trips, expecting that we're, we're going to break down. So, uh, so, but yeah, no, no, no issues whatsoever on the way back. I mean, it was, it was not, really not a perfect. hiccup at all. We had the air conditioning was working and yeah, everything. So, Aaron, what kind of boat do you have? Uh, it's it's like a, it's a type of boat where you can sleep on it. It's a thirty foot. Um, it's like a cuddy cabin. So yeah, it's something that we we take out through the year. But then every you know, well, we've been making a habit of every summer um, taking that out. For, yeah, we we'll go out for like a week or two weeks. Um, so hopefully we, we may be, uh, the fire truck might be towing it to Florida this summer. Oh, wow. We'll see what, yep. 
So, so that's one of the reasons why, why I'm working it over, <laughs> working on it over Christmas to make sure it's, uh, it's up for that trip. But, um, but yeah. Over this past summer, what was your favorite trip out with the boat? Moody Gardens. Yeah, we took it down to uh, Galveston, which is kind of on the other side of Houston from us. And uh, there's a place called Moody Gardens, which has a, a water park. And I don't know, it's it's like they have it's a really bunch fun. of, it's kind of like a museum. And there's a golf course there and there's a water park. And so instead of staying at the hotel, we, we they have a little marina there. So we, we stayed on our boat and... Uh, hung out there and, um, yeah, just kind of bounced around, uh, Galveston a little bit, yeah, um, outside of Moody Gardens. Yeah. Beautiful. And do you go out fishing too? Yes. We fish like every night because of my brother. He loves fishing. <laughs> 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 he likes our road trips too. Yeah. He's gone on his fair share. <laughs> And with the vehicles that you're buying, uh, is it often quite a distance uh, from you and you're doing road trips back with them? This, this was the furthest one that, that I've, I've bought and drove back um, like that. So, so, yeah, this was the furthest one. Uh, the, last, the last one that we were on was uh, we went to Missouri and drove back. What did you like the most about um, this government auction and the process? So, like I said, I, I was really impressed with uh, how responsive the, the sellers were, um, you know, leading up to the auction. And then, yeah, I don't know, just kind of the, the fact that I was dealing with somebody very responsible. Like, you know, I, I didn't I wouldn't feel comfortable taking my daughter, you know, just to some random person that's that's selling a, a vehicle up in Pennsylvania, you know, um, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that, but you know, the fact that I was interfacing with professionals, you know, that, that, you know, have, have a government job, you know, I don't know. It was just that, that, that part of it, I, I felt very good. You know, I felt, felt like there was a, um, a different level of, uh, those people being accountable for what they're selling. Um, so, so yeah, that that was definitely unique than uh, than buying something on eBay or or any other you know car auction type site. Um, yeah, I, I really you know the the amount of communication even after the sale was just top notch. You know they were the guy was funny. Yeah, and the, yeah, this this the whole the whole experience on on that end was was yeah it was just. Yeah, it was unique, and and then yeah, and then she got to sit in the hundred year old uh, um, fire truck, which is which is pretty cool. So, yeah, you don't do that every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say was the biggest challenge um, about participating in this government auction? I can't say that I could really be critical about anything on this process. The payment process afterwards was was incredibly streamlined. You know, got to you know, there's feedback that was offered. So in the event it didn't didn't go well, you know, I could I could kind of offer that feedback. Uh, what advice would you give to people new to government auctions? Um, it, it'd probably be you know that that statement that I made earlier about about buying from a, from a fire department, you know, I, I, I felt very confident that, um, you know, that the vehicle was, was maintained, you know, it was on a, it was on a, a government maintenance program. You know, I, I used to be in the military and the, the government tells you when to change oil and, you know, there, there are strict, you know, rules and guidelines for, for how to maintain that. So, uh, and this, and then the fact that it was at a fire department, you know, I, I know, I know firefighters, some of my friends are firefighters. They, when they're not, you know, on, when they're not out chasing fires, they're, they're washing their vehicles and, you know, I don't know, they, there's a, there's a pride in, in ownership there. So, um, so yeah, I, I would say, you know, go, go in and, and bid with confidence and, and where you're, 
where you may not be confident, um, ask questions because, uh, at least in my case, you know, uh, the, they were very, uh, responsive and, and actually answered my questions instead of kind of dancing around the questions. I asked specific questions about the maintenance history and, and they were very forthcoming about that. So I'd be a lot more comfortable buying something for, you know, off of a government option than, than elsewhere than from a private owner. And for this fire truck, um, you want it without seeing it in person first, correct? That's correct. When you flew out there, that was your first time seeing the truck in person. Were you nervous about that at all? You know, just seeing it online and then being there in person, like, you know, sometimes it not meeting your expectations. Yeah, it's it's not the first time that I've bought something of a vehicle sight unseen. And, and yes, I was probably a little bit more nervous just the fact that Within probably an hour, I was going to be driving that thing, you know, this sight unseen thing back to Pennsylvania. But like I said, I, I, uh, there again, like, you know, the, the communication that I had leading up to um, us picking it up. Um, I mean, I was asking specific questions to, to David, the, the gentleman that we were interfacing with that. Would you have any issue driving this thing cross country? You know, I, so I, I got to ask questions, you know, just very directly with with the gentleman that we were interfacing with so so yeah i mean there there was a there was a certain amount of me being nervous that it was going to be you know uh other something other than <laughs> what i signed up for but i at the same time i mean there were there were just there there were a lot of quality pictures uh that were in the auction and and you know the feedback that i had gotten leading up to it i i, I had a high level of confidence that that i knew <laughs> i knew that what we were going to see when we when we showed up and um, aside from removing the fire station markings and the sirens and things like that, um, has there been like any other work um, that you've done to it? Um, I've done um, just a, a certain level of um, of maintenance type stuff. You know that we're in Texas, we don't have salt on the roads, so you know there's there was some. Uh, um, some issues that I had to address, uh, from, you know, like some of the stuff underneath was, was rusting a little bit, which, which there again, that was, that was forthcoming. That was, that was listed in the auction. So, so yeah, I've had to, you know, I replaced, uh, I replaced some brake lines. Um, I'm about to replace the, uh, the fuel lines. And these are all things that, that run underneath that, that corrode over time. So, um, so yeah, but, but I mean, that's, that's to be expected or that's not totally unusual for, for, uh, a 20 year old, you know, truck. Um, so yeah, I, it was kind of stuff that I, I had planned on doing anyway, and it's probably a little bit above and beyond, but you know, since I'm towing our boat and have, <laughs> have the family in there, I tend to tend to go over the top on, on some of that stuff. So, but yeah, it's, it's been very, very minimal, um, work that I've had to do, um, outside of just D D fire trucking it. Yeah. Better safe than sorry. Um, and proactive maintenance than, uh, there you go. There reactive you go. repairs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um, so how many vehicles do you have? Like, I can count that easily. The D. <laughs> Okay, and Maverick, <laughs> Stop. the beer wing, Potsy, um, the Blazer, Trans Am, we're missing the fire truck, and we're missing one, aren't we? Yeah, the van. The van. Yeah. That's it, right? Eight, yeah. Eight. Eight vehicles, yeah. And do you take any of them, like, to shows, or is it... More so, the pleasure of tinkering around with them. Yeah, I, I, um, I have a couple like classic cars that, yeah, every once in a while I'll I'll uh, take it to car shows. But I I like <laughs> I like driving them, you know, um, obviously. So so yeah, that's I, I don't know, that's that's something that I just enjoy doing. Is I like kind of unique stuff like like this fire truck, you know. I, I like. Um, I like having something different that no, that nobody else has, and I like having 
older stuff like that that's been very well maintained. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we have we have a van that's that's almost as old as this thing, and we've driven that all over the place. That was the thing that 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 was the last road trip that we were on. So, so yeah, I don't know. We we like we like driving. We like we like being active and taking road trips and taking the boat places. Yeah, it's fun. That's fun. Um, and what's the next type of like project vehicle that you're looking for? I don't know. I might be, I, I think I need to be taking a break The the kids are getting, the kids are getting pretty active in, in, in their activities. So I haven't, I haven't been in the garage too much lately. So, um, stuff. yeah. So yeah, nothing, nothing on the horizon, but I don't know. We'll see what Municipid puts up next and in Texas. And yeah, there's a good chance I'll be bidding on something. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ken and Tatiana. Um, this has been fantastic to hear your stories. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for tuning into the Municipid podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the world of government surplus, be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. 